But do a lot of women take advantage of nice guys? Women? To you? <laughs> be, hey, be honest. They be honest. do. Well, there you go, guys. There you go. There you fucking have it. A woman oh, telling man. you that women take advantage of nice guys. What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Purpose Over Pleasure, the his and her version. Ready, babe? I am ready. And today we are discussing nice guys. Who right? likes them? Nobody likes a nice guy. <laughs> so stick around and we're going to talk about the traits of nice guys. We're going to talk about why nice guys finish last or why women don't like nice guys. And... We're going to talk about how to stop being a nice guy. So if you stick around to the end, you're going to get some value from this. Uh, please click share, like, and subscribe and support our channel. All right, let's dive into it. You ready, babe? I am ready. Sounds good. So the reason why we're doing this episode today is because uh, I recently posted an episode and I had a couple of reels. And one of them I mentioned, uh, I talk about nice guys and how to stop being a nice guy. And why nice guys don't succeed in life. And that reel got a lot of traction, got a lot of uh, DMs, got a lot of questions. And somebody suggested that I should make another ep a whole episode dedicated to that. You got hit up about, you know, I think you shared the reel too. So here we are. We are going to discuss nice guys. Mm -hmm. So first dun, question. Dun, dun. Yeah, first question. And today, here's the best part. You are getting twice the value. Because you're going to get a male perspective and you're going to get a female perspective. Yay. So stick around. This is going to be good stuff. Anyways, let's di dive into it. Uh, traits of nice guys. What do you think they are, babe? Traits of nice guys. Yes. Traits and characteristics. Ooh. Uh, okay. So <laughs> speaking from experience, and let me just say that there is – um. To a certain degree, you can be a nice guy. To a certain degree. But you need to have a healthy balance. Don't, um, I'll challenge you right there. Be a kind person. Be a kind guy. Okay, well, okay. Be a nice guy. How about we do this? Do what? I want you to define okay. what nice guy means to you. Okay. What nice guy means to me is a guy who's not confident in himself who does not have his own high standards, morals, and values. So he believes that the best way to gain value in the world and to obtain respect from other people is by being nice to them, a.k.a. saying yes. Mm. So he's being soft. A man's not supposed to be soft. A man's supposed to be hard when it comes to his values and morals and his standards. Okay? Okay. Here we are. Good enough? Is that it? So I got for now. Okay. What's your definition of nice guy? My definition of nice guy, is yes, he doesn't have a backbone. Doesn't Correct. know when how to say no. No. And someone who is just on all fours, like a little puppy, like a little bitch. Relax, okay. Relax. Let's right. let's watch your words, sir. Okay. Um. Yes. So. Oh yeah. Let's watch that. our words, but yes, you're right. Okay. <laughs> As far as I want, I don't want to go dive deeper into it. But uh, in a nutshell, a man who sh doesn't know how to say no, mm -hmm. um, hands and feet for this person, woman. Mm -hmm. And uh, from my own experience was just always at a snap of a finger. Everything that you wanted? For the most part, yes. Yeah. But I wasn't trying to take advantage of it. Because I knew that consciously I was, I knew what he was doing. You know, he was a nice guy and I wasn't going to abuse that. Did you tell him? Stop I being did. a nice guy? I did. And then? He just said that I, he, in his eyes, I deserved it all. Which that I, was his excuse? Yeah. Oh, God. Says you. This is, this is a whole different perspective right here. <laughs> when men say shit like that <clears throat> it really pisses me off again I, I believe that stems down to the, not having your own backbone okay do, do you never told me that i'm being a nice guy no. i never heard you say to me that i'm being a nice guy 
No. Okay. Am I a nice guy? Yeah. You be like a kind person or Yeah, a nice you're guy? kind. I'm respectful. You're respectful. I'm kind, but I'm not a pushover. Right. But I love you. Right. And I believe you deserve Yeah, because you the know world. healthy boundaries. Correct. But if I say no and I've said no to you, that means it's a no. Just kidding, yeah, you have. Okay. So that that just to give you guys an idea what separates the difference and I think it's important to discuss that because some dudes just don't know the difference. Yeah. They overdo it. They it's overdo really it. Annoying. I've seen it with my own eyes. Yeah, like, dude, I have a backbone. You know? And this is how I know that women can get away with a lot of things because these men have... I mean, I've seen it. I've experienced it myself. I've seen it when I used to work at the strip club as a bartender. Yeah, I clarified that as a bartender. And motherfuckers are going to start getting IDs and shit. <sighs> Who cares? If I know what I did, that's nobody else's business. They're going to create their own stories. We, sh we should probably, you know what? Yeah, let's just stop, stop Stop at, I was working at a strip club and let them wonder. Yeah, like, the, the, the new, <laughs> we the know new the followers. truth. <gasps> She's dating She's a stripper. Like, He's dating a stripper. Okay, yes. Um, behind closed doors, though. <laughs> anyway. It was a private show. Um, so, I've seen that. I've mm -hmm. seen women who have taken advantage. And they know they are. And it's, to me, I think it's, you're, you're just, you should just stop because then it's going to come back to you. You're using and abusing technically this man who wants to be nice to you. And this guy can turn around and just snap. And I think we've seen that on, uh, what, are, what are those shows called? Those, those like documentaries. I don't watch TV, but. About what? Uh, murder? Murder and stuff. Oh, he's a nice guy. He says yes. Or And then the moment she starts saying no, he gets all crazy. What, bitch? Oh, we talk, yeah. <laughs> talk, yeah, with Kathleen into like the serial killers. Those but are like, well, well, they're they're deliberately nice. There's a reason for that because, you know, like psychopaths. Yeah. That's what's scary. Can be really nice. And they're so good at it that it's impossible sometimes to distinguish the difference between the authenticity of it mm -hmm. or between person being purposely mm. nice or kind to you just to get what they want and i think that's why it was very hard for me to accept things like that like i i just oh let me do this for you you're so beautiful and this and that thank you but no thank you because i knew i there was no attraction there was no um i saw something or i want to get away with this i said no because i didn't want to come off as oh she's taking advantage of me i knew if i were to do that i wasn't being um intentional and i wasn't being what's the other word um don miguel from his book totally don miguel right uh the five agreements. five agreements i forgot which one it was but i would be lying to myself but do a lot of women take advantage of nice guys? Women? To you? <laughs> be, hey, be honest. Well, there you go, guys. There you go. There you fucking have it. A woman oh, telling man. you that women take advantage of nice guys. Yeah, okay? If I, if I would have said that, guess what? I'm a misogynist. Even though I know it's true, but I purposely wanted her to say that. Because it is true. It is true. I mean, there also there's different kind groups of women, you know, like myself. He was a nice guy. I didn't take advantage of him, mm -hmm. but I knew my self worth. There was a time where I would be at work, I wouldn't have make time to eat, or I I just didn't have time to go get something. Well, he took in consideration of that. So what did he do? He would go get me food without me even asking him. Which is thoughtful. But when it became too much and I felt it, even mm -hmm. people around me felt it, they can see and they would just like make comments. And we would kind of giggle about it, but in the long run, in like during the whole time, that's why I felt uninterested in him. Yeah. 
because he was just too nice and i'm like no say no to me like it's okay there's nothing wrong with you saying and i've told him this multiple times yeah. it's okay you can say no i don't want to feel like you're doing something you really don't then if you're not happy why would you be here like just don't say no so like, he would do nice things or kind or gestures to you mm -hmm. and you know thoughts of you mm -hmm. know care mm -hmm. but he would do it too much it was too much how how so let's let's dive into and dissect the difference again we sometimes unfortunately we have to really really break it down to the basics because i do those things for you too yeah right you right. Those, you, you do those things for me you, like you make me mm -hmm. food and uh, I don't make you food, but I, I you know I, I buy or grab you food and, and bring it to you. Are you not, yeah, you send me food to work. Yeah, or I do that. So what makes it different? Yeah, I'm not trying to inflate my ego. I'm saying what does it, what we both, me and him did that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I do that. But what makes it different from, you know, me and him or whatever, any other person with a nice guy is? What establishes the difference mm -hmm. like, that you know? That I'm, I'm not a nice guy. Is it specific actions when delivering the food, for example, or is the overall character of a person? It was the overall character when it was just consistently. Like, hey, can I come to the shop? Or can I just stop by? Or he would just stop by. and Like, the gifts, the little gifts, they were, they were nice and thoughtful. The flowers, great, nice and thoughtful. But... Anytime I would call and say, hey, what are you doing? Um, he would stop what he would do. And but because he knew I was busy, he wanted to make sure that he made time for me because I didn't have a lot of time. Yeah. But he also wasn't doing stuff for himself so that he was busy. But he was younger than I was. So he didn't have that thought to say to himself well why don't i get into something why don't mm -hmm. i have mm -hmm. a hobby why don't i go to the gym he wasn't utilizing his time properly mm -hmm. which allowed him to have more time to be available for me whenever i call like hey what are you doing or hey do you want to go get something to eat yeah. he's like oh yeah sure i'll be there it's like, Ooh, okay and i can see how women can feel like they have him around his finger and i knew i had him around my finger but I didn't make it an um I didn't want him to know that. I didn't want to make him feel like that. So why you know, and it sounds kind of contra you know, you're kind of contradicting yourself, which is why it's important to explain this and you're not doing it on, on on purpose. Some people might think, well, what's wrong with that? Right. A lot of women would say what's wrong with that? Mm -hmm. I personally know women who do that to their men. As a matter of fact, I have at least one or two friends whose whose wives do that type of shit, and it pisses me the hell off. But it's not my family, mm -hmm. and I'm not gonna, you know, try to intervene. Why is it that a lot of women may think that it's a good thing to be able to have your men around your finger, and why? What What are your thoughts about it? Why women think that they can have yes. their man around? Because I know I have my opinion as to why some women believe. It's a good thing to have power over your man and have him around your finger. Mm -hmm. But I know that long term, you know, down the line, that's going to backfire. I've seen it backfire. I know women who married men who are normal, not exactly the most masculine man, but, you know, a decent man. And they did that shit to them. Mm -hmm. They made them run circles around their fingers and mm -hmm. became, began controlling them and those and let's say domesticated those men yeah okay and f five years i know one like after 10 years and one after five years they asked for a divorce because they couldn't fucking easy. stand the guy they couldn't stand the guy because the guy didn't have a backbone mm -hmm. so it boggles my mind when well you did that shit to him you took a normal guy and you decided to force this shit on him and again fellas i'm not justifying Th this type of behavior, you should have a fucking backbone. Mm -hmm. You should know how to have certain boundaries. And you should be able to say no. It doesn't matter who it is. Y your mom, your dad, your sister, your brother, your spouse. Mm -hmm. A no is a no. Learn how to say no. Yeah. Uh, saying yes all the time is not going to benefit you. I fucking promise you. 
But they would do that to them and they'll domesticate the shit out of them and then they complain and then they file for divorce and then they want a more masculine man who's able to say no and be sturdy with his actions and they're like, oh my God, I wish it was like that. You fucking had a guy like that, but you made it the purpose to make a bitch out of him. And it's his fault. First of all, it's your guys' fault if you allow this to happen. I'm telling you guys right now, let's clear something out. You know, even if I talk and criticize women, at the end of the day, in my opinion, it's 51-49. It's never 50-50. I think a man should be a leader, a provider, a protector, a more dominant figure, and men need to learn how to lead. And with all that comes responsibility. With, you know, as cheesy as it sounds, with great power comes great responsibility. It's true. A man needs to have a dominion of his, of his, over his woman and his family because he's a protector and provider. With that much responsibility, you have to have certain, certain uh, uh, dominion. It's just natural. And with that said, in my opinion, it's at least 51-49. 51% man responsibility, 49% women's. I don't think it's 50-50. Now it fluctuates, maybe 65, 75, 85, but I'd say at least 51, 49. So yes, fellas, get your shit together. Learn how to say no. Because she just told you why and what the difference is. <clears throat> because just like women who buy purses or specific makeup or shoes for comparing, once they get tired of it, once they're just like, oh, I'm over it. I saw Kim Kardashian with this new purse i want that purse now same way it is with nice guys well i sucked him all the nice out of him and i I already know how nice he is i already know how much i can get away with okay i need a challenge that's a toxic behavior that is a that's hella toxic toxic behavior my you know and we talked about this i'll tell you guys a story i'm gonna talk about my ex and i told you about this people should try to control me Little by little, little by little. And I wouldn't say I've caved in, but I've compromised. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Compromising is not always a good idea. Don't let them fool you into saying compromise, compromise, compromise. No, bullshit. Compromising all the time is not healthy. You have to be able to say no sometimes. So she tried that. And she tried a little more, said a little more. And I would compromise. I wouldn't let it have it her way all the time. And I realized that compromising itself is you just prolonging and softening the yes part. The part where she's still going to end up getting shit her way. Mm. You got to let people know that no is a no. Mm-hmm. It's a hard no. Some people are okay and confident with telling no to their friends. But they're not confident to telling no to their, to their women. Mm-hmm. What's the difference? They might have feel guilty for something they did. Maybe an argument they came up. Maybe they feel, I guess, guilty. Because if you and I, we, I mean, we don't really go out. We just have a lot of time. You're at work. I'm at work. Or going to the gym. But. If we go out, or even with you go when you go out with your guy friends, right? Mm-hmm. All I ask is for you to let me know. Hey, I'm going out with my guy friends. All right, cool. Are you guys going? Oh, okay, cool. I don't try to compromise with you about anything. Go ahead. Now, if I wanted to go somewhere, you don't try to say or question me about anything, right? And no, well, I I do. I well, ask, yeah, 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 but. Um, I ask where you're going. Yeah, who you're gonna be with. But yeah, I need to know. It's it's. I don't know how else to, how to compare it, but we we don't we don't. We're not on each other's. We're uh, not on each other's like asses about things, you know, or bring up stuff from the past. Well, you did this. And yeah, we, that's one thing we we don't do. We don't we don't bring up shit from the past. We, yeah. I think it's because we talk about shit right away and. Maybe not even right away, but we talk about stuff that comes up. If something I know for sure you, me, I'm able to do that. Like, y- you would want to talk about stuff. Yeah. But you know how to talk to me. And then me, if something really bothers me, I'm like, all right. In the beginning, I, would, I, I will notate that. In the beginning, 
I knew something was wrong, something bothered you. When? Uh, I forgot when it was, but when I think, I think when we first moved in together, mm -hmm. you were bothered about something, and you didn't discuss it with me, but because I sensed that you were upset, mm -hmm. I told myself, okay, give him space. Mm -hmm. Let him come to you so that he can discuss it. But just show your concern that he knows that you feel that something's going on with him. Mm -hmm. And I know you've seen where or you felt where you've been upset about something. And I can tell. But I ask you, hey, I know you did such and such, and such. your gestures, your like your size or you're very quiet. Even sometimes how I like ask for your name, like your demeanor is different, but that's because I picked up on those little things. Are you asked for my name? Like when I call, call out for, for you. Mm. What, uh, you want, what do you want for? <laughs> <laughs> Don't bother me. Um, but um, that's what makes that? you and I've told you this before, that's what makes you a wiser woman. And the reason why our relationship, a big part of why our relationship is healthy is because we communicate and that communication is based on the fact that you know how to talk to me. Mm -hmm. You have to I'm pay a, attention. Yes, you know, and that taught me how to talk to you because I don't allow disrespect. I don't allow certain habits or drawer slamming mm -hmm. type of things and the sad part is that some girls they know that. they do yeah, yes they exactly purposely, i know my ex did and, that to me and it's it's very disturbing when i hear this and they just say i just want to push this i want I, I just want to um it's just been too easy it's been too smooth i'm like wait what but they, they like that stir, drama. Stir they like that. I know like, women like drama. Women love watching they don't have trauma shit like <laughs> Vanderpump and all these, you know, real housewives of bullshit and Kardashians and yeah, they like all the this crap and murder documentaries, like crime documentaries. Again, because it's like drama and, and, and horror. What you think about, you bring about. Oh, like, bitch, you bored? Mm -hmm. why That's why I said, go get a hobby. <laughs> like, go do something with your life. Go take a class. Go learn something. And shit, and that, that's annoying. Yeah, I've had, I had my ex, my ex do that to me, trying to stir shit up. I was like, what? what why? And it, it's crazy. I, I remember an ex who would, gosh, he was so toxic, and it was so draining. But he would do stuff. Was, he, was that one less than a nice guy? No. This was another one. This guy would purposely do stuff. And then when I would ask him, like, say one night, he'd say, oh, I'm going out with my friends. All right, cool. All right, dude, it's like a uh, work night and it's already one in the morning, two in the morning. Uh, it's five o'clock in the morning. Where are you? And so I was concerned. And he flips it around, plays a victim. Why are you up all on my ass and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, um, you G live with me and yeah. you're, you have work. I'm just concerned where you're at. That's toxic. So it was so bad. It was so bad. And I dealt with that for way too long, longer than I should have. That's toxic. Well, 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 you know, men can be toxic too. I know some toxic dudes. Mm -hmm. Men can be toxic in friendship too. Yeah, it, it's annoying. And Ener it's, energy. I call them energy drainers. And it's the the security. Yeah. The if you if you feel intimidated, if you feel like oh they're doing better than I am, then you're gonna f bring some stuff up and want to argue about People it. People do that to fulfill their needs for being important. Mm. Oh, let me start this shit and I'm gonna flip it. Let me gaslight you and took him out so a winner and I'll boost my own ego. So right? annoying. It's annoying. Um, and let, let's get back to the nice guy traits. So we talk about those, but I know you spoke about some women 
doing this type of stuff to men on purpose because they want the drama or because they want to see how far they can push the guy, right? Let's talk about the other side. An obvious nice guy. Even in your case with, with your ex. Why do women not like nice guys at the end of the day? But honestly. Well, it depends on what woman you're asking. Okay, well, you can start with yourself. Why I don't like a nice guy? Yeah. It's because I like a challenge. Mm-hmm. 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 I like to work for what I'm trying to achieve. Let's dissect that. Okay. You like a challenge. Because guys, men like challenges too. But a lot of times women think that if I if I try to be hard to yeah. get, mm-hmm. I'm a challenge. Yeah. No, you're a child. Mm-hmm. A challenge to a man, if I can have a deep conversation with you, mm-hmm. if I can tap into your brain, if I can understand your mindset, if yeah. I can pick your brain about things that I don't know nothing about, that's challenge. But it's a healthy challenge. It's something that you look forward to doing. But what you talked about earlier, or what I talked about earlier, actually, women trying to be hard to get, they think they put up a challenge. Mm -hmm. But in reality, when you finally get it, you're like, really? That's this is what I've been whining and dining you for. This is like mediocre mm -hmm, at 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 best. You know, (laughs) not challenge your front. I'll admit, um, I was in a relationship with a guy who was older than I was, and. I wanted, I guess you can say the relationship was like, there wasn't anything interesting, Mm -hmm. like a healthy interesting. And I felt like, well, what do I have to do so that it's interesting? Do I have to pick a fight with you? Mm. Do I need to make this like... Without a boredom. It was, it was, I was bored. And I had asked him, when are we going to go somewhere? Like, how about we go do this? We do this. Something healthy. Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't have money or I'm working or um, some 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 excuse. Mm-hmm. All right, cool. I sucked it up. I sucked it up. And I said, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I don't know how else to get to him. He didn't like talking on the phone. Didn't like texting. I'm like, do you want me to do you want to write me a letter? What's going on? Send me small little gifts, nothing. And we're miles apart. He was up north, I was down here, and it was getting boring. Mm-hmm. But I didn't want to break up with the guy because I'm like, well, okay, everything else is fine. Like, I can I can accept that. I'll work with this. And it just wasn't working. Mm-hmm. So I finally was like, okay, well, you know what? Maybe we're just not, you know, compatible. compatible. Yeah. And my mentality back then, and I'll admit it was kind of petty, that I had a broken broke up with him thinking it would make him wake up mm. that's not not necessarily a uh, uh, toxic mentality i always say there's three things that teach you the best lessons in life it's an empty stomach empty wallet and a broken heart those three plus the loss of a loved one which is broken heart mm-hmm. taught me so many lessons in life taught me the most valuable lessons i've been broke i discussed that in one of my episodes i've been broke twice and it sucked. Mm-hmm. And I told myself that I'm not going to be broke again. And I'm blessed and grateful to be where I am today and to do things that, you know, that, that we do. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been hungry before. Yeah. Top ramen wasn't around. Dollar <laughs> There's tree? only so much top ramen <laughs> you can eat. Dollar tree, um, bread and water. But I can't say, like, I can't sit here and say I was homeless right. and I experienced, like, terrible famine. No. No, but I, I've been hungry before. Mm-hmm. And the broken heart, losing loved ones, and then heartbreaks. Yeah. Those, those, those made me freaking strong. Mm-hmm. And one of those times is it was my fault. I chose my mission, my vision, my purpose over the ex girlfriend that I had at, at the time. Well, girlfriend at the time, who then became ex girlfriend. And told her bluntly, "This is this. Uh, what I want to do is I want to pursue me. I want to I want to pursue my dream." Mm-hmm. And I heard the feelings, and we separated. And I I guess came to my senses or whatnot. Or some time has passed when I got my thing situated, and I was like, "All right, now I have some spare time. I try to reconnect." But somebody else somebody else already swooped in and started you know, dating her. So I made my peace with it, and 
I'm like, all right, cool, here we go. You know, sadness on my old friend, but I went through it. I actually went through a depression. I didn't know I went through a depression at the time. Like a few years later, I was like, when I was talking to my, my therapist, he's like, yeah, I think you went through a depression. Like I did. Well, my way out of it was just focus on, on me, focus on fitness, focus on the grind, and I just got out of it. It's normal. It, it, it happened. It happens. Well, I think we forget to remind ourselves that we what's meant for us will be for us yes, at the right definitely. time. So I always never, believed, though. never I always forget believed. that you have to work on yourself first despite anything and anyone 100. if it's if it's for you it will come at the right time the right place mm -hmm. but you come first mm -hmm. and that i had that mentality for a few i was pretty mature for my age but something about that term what's meant for me will be for me Correct. i think it was after i forgot what broke what breakup i had i think in like high school and i'm like what's for me will be for me and then it started to get deeper and deeper and deeper as I got older. And I held on to that idea that, no. It's, 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 it's hope. Hope should never die. You got to have faith. faith. You got to have faith in, 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 in what you're looking for, in what you're doing. You have to believe in yourself. You have to. I believe in, in myself blindly. And I, I don't even think about not believing. And it sounds silly. And it sounds cheesy sometimes. I'm like, why the fuck do I even believe? But I was like, no, no, I believe. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. give a shit. Like, I'm not going to allow the doubt to my mouth. Like, it, it, it has to be rock solid. I don't know why yet. Ask me in 10 years, 20 years. Maybe we'll revisit the subject. Right now, I choose to believe. And I think that's going back to the nice guy. They don't believe in themselves. Yeah, I see the, yeah, confidence. Yeah. You're not confident enough. And if you want to gain confidence, at the very least, hit the fucking gym. Start lifting Read weights. a book. Read a book. Read a book of confidence. or Lose some weight or gain some weight, depending on what, what, what your goal yeah, is. Get around the right people. Because if you have way too much time for somebody, you are not making enough time for yourself. And I hate to say this, guys. And I say this in every goddamn episode. But I'm trying to put this into your subconscious mind because that's what I did to myself. I put this shit deep inside my subconscious mind. And the message is this. Uh -oh. Be confident. Believe in yourself. Like, do it. Obtain like confidence. Do, do it. it. <laughs> Get to the job now. Oh. But God damn, like, you have to believe it. And you start believing more and more and more right after you change your mindset. And your mindset changes when you change your body. Fitness bleeds directly into your mind necessarily why not i my mind first i had to go into the self improvement before i really tapped into the working out mm -hmm. but understand the, the the difference is this men need to do hard shit we need to do hard shit physical suffering for us is necessary it is healthy it is needed it's a therapy doing hard shit you girls are a little different i believe that feminine energy is very majestic it's very sensual it's very euphoric you understand mm -hmm. and like you my love you're beautiful i don't expect you to go there and clang and bang even you do go clang and bang you put in the work at the gym i always tell you do that's why you have this beautiful sexy body but i don't expect you to go there and do the same type of shit i do hey we do we work out sometimes yeah, but, but it's a lower weight. <laughs> but my intense, my workout intensity is different than yours, and I don't expect you to have the same workout intensity. Your body is different, your goals are different, and I don't want you to be bulky. And again, I'm not saying stop lifting weights because it makes women bulky. No, it does not. I'm just saying that we have different goals, mm -hmm. right? So for men, doing hard shit is good. It helps your mind. It makes you overcome physical challenges every day, little wins. Working out is a physical challenge. When you complete a small physical challenge, then you get a little win. When you get a win, you feel a little confident. Mm -hmm. And you do that day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. Those little 1% or half a percent or fraction of a percent wins stack up and they grow.
and they grow and they're oh the beast is oh mm -hmm. i can hear her. Yep. here we go she senses her mother yeah oh she cannot yeah she can't um i creating like implementing the fact or the factor of having habits that did i did that come out right having, habits? having good habits you mean daily habits daily habits because i'm sure there's going to be guys out there that are say well how do i not be a nice guy well create Grow some habits balls. You can't really grow some bigger balls. Well, I'm not saying literally. Well, come on, let's break it down for, for some. <laughs> um, it goes directly. It goes back to what I said, but stop for a second. Um. So. Habits, good habits, healthy habits. Think about. Is she ask questions? Is she? How do I know if she's taking advantage of me? Well, are you always saying yes? Do you say no even though you want to say yes? But what are your daily tasks? Does it intervene with what you should be doing for yourself? Is it tampering with uh, your gym time? Is it tampering with your work time? Is it tampering with your family time? Is it tampering with your Priorities. you time? You know, and creating healthy uh, priorities, knowing that I got to take care of that first. Mm-hmm. You men need to take care of themselves first. Women, same thing for women. Women need to take care of themselves first. They, on the opposite side, there are girls who will be nice girls to guys. And I think that should be another topic on my podcast, of course. Um, that women need to know how to say no to men too. Mm -hmm. And there are men out there that will take advantage of a woman if she keeps making time for him. I learned that by growing up with, um, I was a tomboy, so I had my two cousins. And then up from there, I had, I used to play uh, like baseball, football, and I would see the way that guys would talk. And I would see how they would talk about all the girls. And I picked up from that. Like, dang, that sucks. I don't want to be like that. So ever since then, I carried myself to that level of, I don't want some guy to talk about me to his friends because I see how they talk about those other girls. I don't want to be like that girl. And say no and don't chase him. Don't go running after him. Don't try to call him. Don't over. Oh, he's not texting me back. Okay, well, maybe he's, he's busy. Maybe he has sports or he has homework to do. I think an important trait for a man to have is don't kiss and tell. Have some respect. Like Don't be 15. Oh, yeah. Okay? Be a man about it. If you hit it and quit it, whatever. But it's don't be walking business. around. This business is between you and her. That's it. You only ruin your reputation. Because at the end of the day, if I hear a guy who's out there Kissing and telling or hitting and quitting and then walks around and talks shit. Well, you're the one who hit it, bro. Yeah. Why are you complaining? Or even worse, you're the one who married this crazy bitch, according to you. So I'll listen to you once, maybe twice. But then I'll start asking questions. Well, what the fuck are you doing about that? Are you doing anything or are you just going to take it and then complain about it? Take it and then complain about it. Do something about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you signed that check for 18 years till your child is 18. You're responsible. But then we go way back to, hey, bag it up. Or learn how to have a strong pull-out game. Shit okay. happens. Take responsibility. What's in our next question of nice guys? Well, I wanted to dissect a little more. On what part? You also talked about, let's, let's go back to the uh, confidence thing. Okay. Because I think at the root... It's sexy. Confidence is sexy? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, let's talk about the good stuff, right? Uh -huh. And I've heard this before from women, mm -hmm. that women like when a man is passionate about something. It doesn't have to be being a millionaire. It doesn't have to be something crazy. It can be plumbing. It can be drawing. It can be whatever, fitness, but you're passionate about it. And you, you might have goals and dreams in it, but it's something you have for yourself that you work towards, and you love it. And I think that also establishes confidence in you because you have purpose. 
So would you agree with, with me on that? Yes, because that means you're making time for something that you that makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. And you're investing in yourself. Mm -hmm. And when you invest in yourself, that means you love yourself. Mm -hmm. And then it creates confidence. Now, any man who just doesn't have a hobby, doesn't know what to do with his time, sits on his butt all day, yeah, doesn't with really the, get with up with to do any time, any gym, any Plays working video out. Games. Yeah, I'm talking to you motherfuckers who play video games for hours, watch porn, and eat it's, garbage food. It's, it's depressing. And if we were to go to war, this is why women have, are, have been leveling up because there aren't a lot of men out there that are going to invest in themselves. Invest in creating something for themselves that they could protect mm -hmm. uh, of their family and other people. Coming down, like taking it back to the tribes, you know, where, yeah. hey, these are our women and children. We, they have to be protected. And they're, and we expect them to, if we go to war, shit. First of all, oh, in any war out of a hundred men, myself. yeah, in any in any war out of a hundred men, I think it's the saying goes like this: in any war out of a hundred men, ninety of them should not be there. Nine of them do most of the fighting, and one is a hero. But going back to what you said, um. You you talked about yeah men being weak. Mm -hmm. Remember that meme where nowadays women don't look for men with the uh, characteristics of I don't know being a millionaire or something. They look at men with does this motherfucker have characteristics of surviving a post nuclear oh, apocalypse? Yeah, yeah. it's true. Mm -hmm. It's true. Mm -hmm. Some men I look at them like, dude, if we first not even war, let's say there's really really hard times. Like, what are you gonna bring to the table? And that's how men operate. We're tribal creatures. For thousands and thousands of years, that's how we survived. S certain men did certain things. Some were warriors. Some were artists. Some were writers. Some were carpenters. Some were philosophers. But everybody had a role. Everybody had a role. Yeah. Even in a society, even Spartans, legendary warriors, since the age of eight or nine, born and bred to fight be complete badasses but they had men who did didn't weren't cut out to go to to war to be become sp soldiers so you know they were politicians poets philosophers there are still Thinkers. writings and things that you know that remain in history that's how we know about spartans mm -hmm. i think it's always better to be a warrior in a garden than garden at a war if you're a garden at a water, it's just going to be tough for you. It's ugly out there. Mm -hmm. And I think ultimately, me growing up, specifically after reading a lot of classic literature, I always thought a true man is the man who is able, is capable of great violence, but he has it under complete control. Mm -hmm. The type of man who can kill somebody and then go put a baby to sleep. You know, not literally strangle yeah. the baby, but <laughs> sing yeah. a lot about put the baby to sleep. But I always said, because there were people back in the days, they would go to war and then they would write beautiful letters mm -hmm. to their women back home. I think that's the balance of feminine and masculine yeah. energy. Yeah. And these, uh, I can't even call them men. Men boys. <sighs> Because there's men, boys, there's son, husbands, you know, those different terms. Oh like when mom raised, oh, when, when women, when you raise a son, husband, a son, husband is the man that you turn into your, your son that you turn into a husband because your husband left you for whatever reason. You are doing them a complete, complete dishonor. At that point, women need to have see a therapist. Yeah. Like you, you're not doing the world any good by doing that. I witnessed that several times. Mm, I witnessed um, that too. What was I saying back before you before I interrupted us? I apologize. It's okay. Uh, yeah, the fact that men, you don't even have to be like 
mm, macho masculine man. macho man kind of thing no macho man a macho man macho macho man <laughs> i just stand for something stand for something or you'll fall for anything not for like okay cool you support a football team all right cool that's your hobby all right i get that no judgment but total, total judgment right do here. something that's going to get you somewhere in life like back in the day last names meant something mm -hmm. now it's just a name mm -hmm. that's it mm -hmm. there's no there's no value to that last name or it's like ooh, you're that that's your last name people Ooh. died that's yeah. legacy mm -hmm. men have become so comfortable so nonchalant about things that the important things that used to matter no longer matter like the thing like your last name mm -hmm. but your, I think your legacy your ancestors i think that's for another episode of uh we're talking about nice guys no right no <laughs> but it, nice guys don't have that type of shit yeah and it goes down to the backbone have legacy mm -hmm. you're gonna die one day when you die what will people remember you for a lot of people gave up on that about i think what? a lot of people gave up on what they're going to be remembered for that's and that's why pathetic. people stop do going after bigger dreams in life and they just decided just to settle i think that's happening a lot nowadays with all e social media and all that good stuff i mean all that good stuff all that horrible stuff well yeah it's to a certain degree i think yeah, if you use it for business yeah. like we do mm -hmm. i mean i still have a hard time i want to be i still have a hard time a challenging time a challenging time not scrolling so much yeah but i'm getting better at it mm -hmm. and obviously it's not hours a day like six seven eight nine hours i don't scroll my phone for six i never hours. said you did I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, luckily, what I love about an iPhone is whenever, it, at the end of the week, it gives you that little summary. Uh -huh. Your screen time is, you know, higher than last week or lower than last week. Uh -huh. Whenever, I always try to go lower. And whenever I'm like, shit, it says my, my this week's time, screen time was higher than last week's. So I got I to gotta lower it. Yeah. I got to, like, stop scrolling. Yeah, so that kind of keeps me on check, keeps me accountable. That's good. Um, but back to our topic men boys men boys we're talking about i if from a woman's perspective even though i'm in a relationship and i see these men out there it's very disturbing and i feel bad for the women out there who have given up on men because either they're too soft um they think women think that these men are just trash because they're out here sticking their genitals and other women and they're just kind of like not taking anybody serious and women mm -hmm. don't want to i hear that a lot you know i have girls that come into my shop and they talk about you know we can't trust men or i'm not going to make time for a man but it also goes back to well, okay well why do you feel that way you women also forget that they have to bring that up in their own conversations with themselves why do i feel that i can't trust a man and go from there is it because your ex cheated on you is it because he left you for your best friend is it because you're insecure about yourself like what it's not men's fault that somebody else ruins that in you and i i think women do that often they mm -hmm. they just no i don't want to date They're all men are, are trash all men are evil well that's, so that's what stupid. you're going to project that's if so you're putting stupid. that out there that's exactly what you're going to get that's why yeah. you ha you keep having shitty dates you keep like oh this man's trash this man's... i follow this girl and she just oh like has a whole series of all the trashy men she's gotten on dates with and then i'm like th thinking about it i'm like i don't know the girl but when it comes down to that well instead of make dating looking for dates why don't you focus just on focus on yourself? And that's that's why we work on ourselves. And if I didn't meet you, we weren't even looking for each other. Mm -mm. We, we, mm -mm. I, I, I'm so grateful that we met naturally and organically. Mm -hmm. At the time where we were ready to meet. Right. Even though you were like a week after mm -hmm. you found out you were cheated on and me deep into 
womenizing. <laughs> um, but we <laughs> progressively worked on ourselves mm -hmm. years prior to that. So when we met, we were two people who were independent and happy being by themselves and, and confident. And then we just contributed to to each other. I really have to say that I really, really hope people understand that. I want people to understand that finding true love is going to come inside. Mm -hmm. Highly, highly recommend The Mastery of Self and The Mastery of Love by Don Miguel Ruiz. If you have not read that book and you're single, you need to read that book. If you're dating and you still have trouble with your self-love or your relationship, read that book. I read that book after my ex that, that before you mm -hmm. cheated on me. Um, he, my friend recommended to him, and I said this on the podcast before, and I, I listened to the audio and, but a part of me already knew I loved myself. But sometimes we get so caught up in relationships, we lose ourselves. And that's why after I broke up with him, I said, I don't want to get, I'm okay. I don't want to be in like, and I'm not going to rush anything. Even people told me, don't you think this is too soon for you? And I said, I know myself. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm capable of. I know what's going through my head. I know the values I have. I know who I am. And... I'm not going to pursue something because I'm, I'm, I'm filling a void. I experienced mm -hmm. that feeling of void in my past. But I knew, hey, look, I'm just enjoying my single life with company. For seven days? Well, like, oh, you were still it, single. It was Sunday. Okay, Sunday. I found out Sunday night, Monday, then that whole week. And then I met you on a Thursday. It was like, a little, it was like mm. two weeks, like a week and a half. But even then, when we first had our conversation, I brought it up. Now, because I knew there was some type you of like... Brought, you told me yeah, the I, first time we spoke, yeah. you told me some, you got cheated on? I told you I had. I told you that I recently had just got out of a relationship. The, the night we the first night met. The night we first met. I told you that. I because that. I knew you were flirting with me, but I also knew I still needed to carry myself as a woman. I still yeah. knew that I have values because if I... This were to go anywhere, mm -hmm. I didn't want you to say, well, you never, you were flirting with me. You just mm -hmm. got a relation. No, if this goes anywhere, I need you to know that I just got out of a relationship. Yeah. Now, what you do with that information, that's up to you. But I know I'm clearing my closet and I'm saying it right now. I had to work for it also. Oh, yeah. This, this, this is what it comes down to. Hard work. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, I think it's important to, to tell them. It's important to tell them that, you know, I had to work for it. Oh, yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't I mean, allowed do we, to do what I want to do. Our, our first date when we our cars got locked in, you know. Your car got locked in. Or both, both of, our, of cars. our cars got locked in. That was funny. So what happened is in our first date, a, a, a bunch of funny stuff happened that day. Yeah. A, a, a co-worker of yours overserved me yeah <laughs> good guy i'm not complaining <laughs> you know, thanks bro which is which is cool i like that guy he wasn't a hater a lot of times uh and you know and he was a guy in good shape at the time and um uh, i think the car situation is actually more fun so i'm gonna talk about that one but you know, I, was a I was a little buzzed digressing, i was a little buzzed yeah and but uh, we passed over the the line, limit, the, the, the limit the of the when limit our of cars parking. could be there. Correct. So you're taking too long explaining this. So long story short, our cars got locked in and he, uh, he's like, well, you can stay at my house. And I said, no, sir, I'm not going to your house. Yeah, you're like, to. it's I fine. You can sleep on my bed. I'll sleep on the couch. I'm like, I did say that. Does it say stupid on my forehead? Did it, Did I lie about it? No, you didn't. And, and, I, was and, being but, a and I was being a gentleman. But you were. Okay. And. 
again it's hard to describe this because people when you say it, you have to feel the energy you have mm -hmm. to feel them people are gonna be good oh, bs blah, 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 blah. but i think we vibed good that night you know you weren't like if you were over like flirtatious if you just kept wanting to kiss me i would have been like no i'm I sorry wasn't, i wasn't desperate you you were, I really wasn't. You were very it, respectful. Yeah. You were like nice. You were just like, hey. Oh, here we go. You use the word. Well, I wasn't like nice, but it was. I'm just you're cordial. You know, you're mm -hmm. you you uh, were respectful. And I said, okay, well, we're having a good time. I could have gone to my sister's house. Mm -hmm. But I said, you know what? I like I like spending time with him. And I know that I can, uh, I respect myself. Mm -hmm. So you called an Uber and I said, under one circumstance or under what? Under one uh, condition. condition, you buy me a toothbrush. And that yeah. is how I got my first toothbrush in his house. Take notes, ladies. <laughs> Nobody kidding. ever uh, had a toothbrush <laughs> in my house. Nobody ever left it. <laughs> To rush in my house. So yeah, and we we were talking, and um, I think we made out, but that was it. That was strictly it. You were mm -hmm. respectful. I was like, okay, cool. And then I took you to your car next day. Mhm. Mm took us, and I was like, oh man, I got no makeup, but it was fine. And let's go back to say, I think sometimes women confuse also the fact that when you're being nice and. Yeah cordial to them they look at it like oh he's trying to get into my pants yeah and i've, I've actually been told that before mm -hmm. not a negative way but i was like oh you, you're so respectful this and that and, and you kind of put out of my favor at the end of the day but i've always treated a woman like a gentleman because i was raised a gentleman mm -hmm. and a few times it kind of backfired on me because the lady got into her feelings and then i was the, the asshole but I never purposely lied and sat there and tried to say things to make you feel good and tell you that you're pretty just to get into your pants. No, I was being respectful and cordial. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that. I was just being me. I mean, I'm sorry. And, you know, <laughs> I've always been respectful and cordial. I was just, I was just raised that way. I, I was open doors. I've always, you know, paid for the bill. But that goes, some women want things when they want them. Just the same these when girls, them with them? they they're they're playing hard to get or they're like they want you to be aggressive like they like that kind of yeah i want you to be a but leader at levels there's levels to this you're just gonna go and throw open your legs yeah ladies and gentlemen <laughs> yeah, nowadays. And nowadays well nowadays i mean there's planned parenthood plan b blah 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 so there's zero fucking accountability or there's cardi b oh. cardi b cardi b oh cardi b She's, that girl's hustler, but man, some of the stuff she talks about, um, I, I just don't. That's, you know what? what you want to hear a funny story about Cardi B? I don't. Uh, it's quick. It's a quick story. I, I feel like you're still gonna tell me. Yeah, so long, 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 long time ago, <laughs> I found Cardi B, and I followed her when she was. I'm gonna admit it. I followed her on Instagram when she was just an obnoxious stripper in Atlanta. She was loud and she was obnoxious, and I remember seen her because she was so obnoxious that i actually unfollowed her i was like no fuck this this is annoying like she's too much mm -hmm. and then the time goes by and I, I see her on the magazine somewhere on tv and something 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 so i find her again and i go back to her page and her page is brand new all the you know Sweet. stripper shit all the obnoxiousness all the sluttiness that i saw was gone and now she's a different persona. She's, I mean, Cardi B is still Cardi B. Mm -hmm. I don't judge her. It is what it is. Yeah, I would prefer her not singing about, you know, WAP and all that shit, you know, just, which influences young women out there. But I was like, it was just, to me, it was like, oh, damn, where's all the stuff that was there before? Mm -hmm. You know, when she was just a stripper in Atlanta. Yeah. Now it's a whole different person. Marketing. So, back to um, yeah. our, our first date. How you carried yourself was very important and how I carried myself was very important, mm -hmm. especially on a first date. Mm -hmm. I still, yeah, we we had a makeout session, but that was it. Mm -hmm. Where I was like, okay, no, well, let's just yeah. 
PG-13 it, Mm -hmm. you know, save it for later. And even then, our next date, same thing. Yeah, like I said, I had to work for it. Because I knew that if I were to have given it up like that, then it would be in the back of my mind, well, maybe he's going to think I'm easy. Maybe he's going to like, everybody knows it's not brain science. If you open up your legs on the first day, you will be talked about. Oh, yeah. And not necessarily talked about, but you uh, will people be will make judged. certain judgment. Yeah. Yes. It's like saying, oh, I didn't know I could get pregnant. No. When you open up your legs and you still use protection, you can still get pregnant. Things can happen with that pr- happen, protection. Yeah. You're, you're, people don't like to think that, or they forget to think that there's a consequence for everything we do in life, good and bad. Mm -hmm. And if you don't think about the consequences Mm -hmm. before you do something, then you're screwed. You're not going to get through far, very far in life happy. Mm -hmm. And that's where people, they do that. They, oh, well, I, I, it wasn't planned. I'm sorry. Anybody who makes the excuse that their child wasn't planned. If you have sex, <laughs> if I stick oh. my finger in this electric hole, do you think I'll get electrocuted? I don't know. Let me try. Yeah, if you're like five. Oh, yeah. man. Since I, we're talking about that, right? And before we move on to, like I said, we're going to talk about how not to be a nice guy, but I have one thing to ask you. Since we talk about the topic of of that player or a nice guy if you had to choose uh, and let me let me define the two player i mean <laughs> a good a better version of a player right <laughs> okay let me put it what this way what game are we playing twisted okay. metal <laughs> what, what, what I, what, need for speed when i met you right when i when i met you uh, I guess let's I can just use, be honest i guess i'll use the word player. i was a player right so so but I am. You know me. You know how I am. You know how I was. So, not a piece of shit type of player who manipulates women and and let's breaks just them. say it like this: you were dating. I know, but, but my point is this: so would you choose that type of person, or would you choose a nice guy? Clearly, I I chose that person because okay. you're sitting there. <laughs> so, damn, <laughs> like, come on now. <laughs> touche, touche. So you this goes to tell question. you. This goes to show you guys that it's. Better to be a player than being a nice guy. Let's 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 take and that s- word well, out. It's thing. not player, okay? It's not player because a lot of people will get misunderstand that player. I'll if we talk about back in like yeah. early two thousands, don't want to be a player yeah. no more. No, I was keeping it simple, okay? I I'll, I'll, I'm a man, and when Thank you met God. me, I was a man, right? Thank God. But I'm I'm really actually gonna play try to play this against me, right? So if you were to choose. Like starting today for the rest of the the world, the this life on earth, would you rather have more players or more nice guys? And I'll tell you my opinion about it. So what would you like? As a woman, what would be better? More players out there or more nice guys out there? And let's see if we we're on the same page about this one. So Players. Damn, I don't put you in in a, in a state of silence like that often. <laughs> <laughs> so, I just hate that. I just don't like that term, <laughs> players. I don't think that should be used as a term. <laughs> I just choose something. You, you, you else. got you got beef with that word, dude. I don't have beef with it because it it sucks because if women, okay, mm-hmm. we do that. Do what? We are players. Yeah. Oh, I, okay. I see what you mean. Yeah. So like that song you were that I hate. P- player. You were a player. Well, so was I. Okay. Mm-hmm. But I was very discreet about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All women. Women. Because if I were to tell you, I'm also dating. I'm pretty sure you wouldn't have liked that. No, but I'm not an idiot. Right. I, I met you. I Again. Didn't write that right there. Let's take it back to the 90s the 80s i'm pretty sure that they had 
mentioned like hey look i'm i'm dating this person i'm dating this one i don't know i i'm not sure i think yes that's healthy it's very uncomfortable but you're putting it out there Mm-hmm. hey look you're not the only one that i'm talking to i've had some girls that had told guys like look you're not the only one i'm talking to just so you know now for me i had maybe one other person but i was already like no nah, this is not going anywhere and i knew that i just didn't that that just wasn't for me now if you didn't decide to end those things with those women, I had already made the conscious decision that I cleaned up my roster. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because I knew if I wanted to take you serious or anybody serious, I had to remove any distractions. Mm-hmm. Because I'm not going to allow them to have more time with me and me not really being intentional with our dates, mm-hmm. our conversations. Because then I'm like, did we talk about this already or did I talk to that other guy about that? I can't remember. I didn't want to do that. Oh, yeah, you caught me doing that type of yeah, shit. Yeah, I caught you a few times. <laughs> Jesus. See, if you would have kept on being sloppy, I would have been like, all right, you know what? This just well, being sloppy me. is what made me realize, all right, dude, you need to f- figure this one out. And it wasn't it wasn't just about you. Just to be clear, and I told you this before, I didn't do what I did was for you. Right. And what I'm talking about is that I went on a what do you call it? I called it a cleanse, mm-hmm. but uh, what's the term for it? Starts with an F, I think. Abs no starts with abstinence, right? Yeah. So I decided to go on certain amount of days and be abstinent, mm-hmm. like no right. sex. Right. And also, I added no drinking on top of that. Right. Um. And the, the, the reason be behind that was obviously, number one, is to cut off all the women, including you. I wanted to cut you off to I wanted to cut off everybody, all the women that I had at the time. And focus on myself and really try to like look into myself and dive in into my, my subconscious mind because it was just draining my energy. I could it, it, yeah. And I was getting sloppy. But long story short, I cut off everyone, but not you. You somehow weaseled your way into my heart. No, I did not weasel myself. And here we are now, two years later. Yeah, you did. You're a witch. I always told you you're a witch. You know some of that witchcraft shit. But I did it for me. Right. But it just sort of worked out for both of us. You're welcome. Well, the fact that I knew that... I knew for myself, if he doesn't say something get his shit together not necessarily get your shit together but if it took more than mm, i'd say like nine months six months Ooh, i had that much time yeah. god damn it i wish i had i knew she told me right then that six months of solid, if solid playerism what? i could have had <laughs> playerism like playerism that you like wow. that term? I just <laughs> totally made that shit up but I'm, You're telling I, me I had six I was, months? I was how old? No. 34, 33? Um, yeah. I was kidding. like, yeah. and that's why I cut off mm-hmm. any of those past relationships because they were just stagnant. And they didn't, it wasn't where I was dating them. It was just, oh, I still had ex. It was just like, it, it was ended nicely. You mm-hmm. know, it was respectful. But I said, I don't, I want to, I want to start off fresh. I want to mm-hmm. start off with somebody who I can get to know, someone that um, I can, you know, get learned from. Everybody already knew what their BS was. And I was just like, oh, am I going to have to settle for that? Like, okay. And I just did the work. And I was confident that it was going to happen for me. Mm-hmm. And so I trusted god universe that it was gonna happen now if it wasn't you it was gonna be somebody mm-hmm. else because that's how determined i yeah, was there's fucking s- almost eight billion people out there but you said you said a keyword i did the work what kind of work please let our viewers know i did the self self work care work okay, and i still it all do. starts with you yeah I we, still are, we do. both do I, I make time for myself. I do my meditations. I do my journaling. I read my audios. I, I listen to my audios. Yeah, you journal I a lot. Just, and I also communicate with you what goes on within me with my thoughts. And I share them with you yeah. because some 
we I look back and I think about situations, I think about uh, experiences that I had and how I've gotten this far and it's nice to know that mm -hmm. because I didn't we forget that we're evolving and we're changing physically, emotionally, spiritually. Spiritual. And it's nice. It's nice to be able to have a partner that you can communicate and share those deep feelings and be vulnerable without them judging you. Like, I didn't want to tell you that I was spiritual because it gets so much uh, just bad talk. Like, oh, that's that's creepy or that's just that's childish or like the whole manifesting stuff. In the beginning, you're just like, oh. Well, that's what I said. You're a witch. I was like, cool. She's a witch. <laughs> I'm gonna let her do her thing. Um, but babe, don't digress. You never answer my question. What? Player oh, or a nice man. guy? Okay. If you had to choose. Uh I'd be single. <laughs> God damn it. I uh, honestly I'd <clears throat> I'd say I'd rather be treated nicely than to be disrespected, first and foremost. Why? Because I know myself. I know that I love myself. I value myself. And I would rather somebody treat me nice than for somebody to not know and see my worth and still want to juggle me with other women. Mm-hmm. So that's me personally, mm -hmm. because I don't want to deal with maybe the girl is the other girl he's messing around with finds out about me and then she's going to want to bring drama into my mm -hmm. life. And that's playing with fire. OK, fair enough. Fair enough. I would rather take uh, a player than a nice guy because mm -hmm. at, at the end. Hold on. So you rather date a nice uh, a player? No, chick? no, no. I'll, as a man. If I were to choose other men around me, I think I'd rather choose more players than nice guys. Okay. Because at least a player would have a sense of, uh, in my opinion, right, com s competition, which is which is necessary for men. He's not a pushover most of the time. He's not, you know, he's confident. It takes balls to go talk to women. Not everyone's born with ability to go out there and, and you know start talking to women. Like I had to go out of my way and be like, fuck it. Just give it a shot. But I also so, that's it's just my opinion. And, you know, but well, let's kick it up. Let's it. kick it up a notch. Okay. At least a nice guy can improve to balance out his charismatic traits. A player sometimes is very cocky and thinks I don't need to change my mm. ways for a woman. I'm okay with doing this. And there's a lot of men out there that think it's okay to juggle multiple women because that's just a normal alpha thing. I don't know. Well, you're not contradicting yourself because that's who I, at the time. Right. You know? But like I said, you have, there are men that do that. There are men that will still juggle women and they're married. See, that, that okay. I'm talking about a different thing. Yeah, that's that's not what I'm talking about. Okay, so that's back not to, being true to okay, your family let me and your loved Okay, one. let me switch up the question. Mm -hmm. Would you rather date a nice girl or a player chick? A nice girl all day. Well, this is why we talk about this. I give you my perspective as the world, living in the world, man to man. I'd rather mm -hmm. deal with, obviously, I'm not going to be dating a man, right? Or marrying a man. But in relationships, yeah. In relationship well let me ask you would you rather be surrounded by nice girls or like confident like i don't know play a chicks confident but like play a play a chicks which i think sounds so so dumb girls can be players too that song is so stupid you heard that song right oh uh, yeah um this, this is a good topic this, this i is think a good topic. Yeah. i definitely have surrounded myself with girls who know that they can they have guys but to a certain degree like mm -hmm. they know that they're they carry that confidence like oh yeah i have you know they real, keep it under control real confidence or fake confidence because we both know a lot of women out there show 
confidence, but they're not confident. They have a lot of insecurities. Mm -hmm. So talking about real confidence. Yeah. I'm talking about. No, I've I've had put, both. Put it, up, put it up a front. No, I've had both. I've I've knew both sides. There was some girls that were just overly confident and very vocal about it. That's where I'm like, ooh, girl. Yeah, that's a trait that 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 you I'm just. I don't like. Ooh, I can't. And during hard times, men who say they're confident or say they're the shit during hard times test them. Mm -hmm. and hard situations test them there's a lot you can learn a lot about a man when shades the fan mm -hmm. whether it's a fight whether it's business whether it's some kind of critical situation mm -hmm. whether it's a, a, a hard decision that needs to be made you're like mm. well your actions tell me a lot about you mm -hmm. but i think men uh, nice guys still have the ability to be better there's always room for growth there's always room to do better and i don't want men to think that oh well, i'm a nice guy and and this is why we're here it. we're doing this episode for the nice guys yeah it's just learning so they learn how to stop being nice guys and don't confuse being nice and being kind should we should we should dive in right into the next point which is yes what should we tell these guys out there how to stop being a nice guy Confidence is the one we, we talked about. Confidence. Stacking, you know, stacking the ways mm -hmm. to become confident in yourself. Mm -hmm. What else? I mean, I have my key points. What, what, what? Ladies, create, ladies first. Create, uh, create hobbies. Get into the gym. Get, pick up um, a trade. Uh, learn something new. Re pick up a book. Have purpose. Uh, have purpose. Stop seeking pleasure all the time. Yeah, because if you're giving somebody else too much, even TV, I recently I had a conversation with a client and talking about TV shows. And I said, I'm at a point in my life that I don't want to listen, watch or hear, hear anything that's not adding value to myself. Yeah, you because even told me that. That is time being wasted mm -hmm. that I will never get back. And if I want to get somewhere in this life, who I don't know when my time is up. Nobody I want to utilize every minute I get with some type of value. And or just to myself. Listening to my own thoughts. Because a lot of the times we're on social media listening to other people instead of getting quiet and listening to the thoughts that we have. So that we can become better for ourselves and our future. Yeah, or you just bug me with your thoughts. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks. So, so special. Very special, baby. I'll be here all night. I have you in my life. You're welcome. Sometimes <laughs> it's like, mm, if you text me something, okay, cool, move on. <laughs> I'll get back to it later. But, you know, a lot of times you say stuff that, that is really meaningful. And that's what I love about you. you, you you're a wise woman. I come to you for advice. As confident and com uh, competent as I am, and I like to think that I am. Well, you have to have a partner I, like that. I come to you, and I told you that I need your advice. I trust you. I trust your judgment, and that was one of the factors why I was very attracted to you. I was like, hmm, this woman right here. Well, if you can't wise. go to your partner, then why do you want to make them to, yeah. as your partner? Well, because they look good and they're like at the gym. I met a few guys who were good looking, but as soon as they opened their mouth, it was just. Yes. Amen. No. St goes. Stop. Like that was so unattractive. I've literally stopped talking to guys because I just couldn't and I didn't want to. I didn't want to break their bust their bubble, but I would ask questions. And if I wouldn't get any, like, oh, I don't know, or uh, I guess so, really, that's that's as good as it's going to get? And um, after that, I'm like, okay, well, it's all right. Uh, maybe for somebody else. Not for me. Would you me. believe me if I tell you I had those encounters too? You know, like like the first date with an attractive woman, but I was like, oh, Jesus. <laughs> Red flag, red flag, red flag, red flag. Some more red flag, red flag. Cool. Uh, I'm going to enjoy my steak. I'm going to pay the bill. I'm going to drop your ass off. And I'm going to tell you good night. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to slowly fade away into the darkness. And that's why men, women <laughs> and men 
need to create something for themselves before they go out on any dates, on any dates. Have value, bring value to these conversations. Don't just say, oh, well, did you see what so-and-so posted on social media? Did you see this cele celebrity? Like, did you see what was going on on the news? No. Or on your phone. How many times, how often do we see this on, when we go on? Oh, yeah. Table next to us or table across this right here. Okay, maybe if you're married for like 10, 20 years, which still is not acceptable. Well, we didn't have these phones. Like what, 20... Was it 20 years? How old am I? I got my cell phone in I was 2016. I was 15. 16, I think. Yeah. I was I was pushing almost 18 years old. Oh, dang. 17? 15. I was a freshman. Yeah. I rang up my cell phone bill to $600. Damn. My dad was pooped. What the hell are you this talking? Is right this is This is This is where you had to pay for right minutes. Now. Yeah. This is where we had to pay for, for text messages. Minutes, dude. After nine o'clock is when I could use my God, phone. God, I remember those days. Wow. I remember you pay for like minutes and texts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, you go over, like, then you hopefully yeah, you didn't use them and they rolled over to the next one. Yeah, I remember the rollover <laughs> minutes. Oh, these fucking Don't millennials. Don't call me till nine o'clock. Oh, we're millennials. The Gen Z, they have no idea. Are ask ask a Gen Z to show you the sign of talking on the phone. I, I dare so you. Cause I, I have asking about this is, AOL. This is, this is what they tell you. This is not the sign of talking on the phone, guys. This is okay. Are you the serious? phones. They've done that. Yes, I've actually had a little. You know how I always I always have like little social projects. Yeah. You know, I have long term and short term, and I yeah. I've heard that somewhere one time, and I did it to a bunch of people, a bunch of Gen Zs, and yeah, this is what I got. I'm talking on the phone because this is a square, right? So this is what they do. The phones that we grew up with, right? Was this. And before us, it was this. <laughs> Remember that shit? I had a pager. <laughs> pager? I don't even know what the fuck pager is. I had a pager. Yeah. All right, anyways. Oh, psychic. All right, uh, we, we, we digress. You have, to, you have to do something. Find something. Gosh, don't just be a potato. Oh. Uh, obsessed over football oh, oh my, my favorite gosh. player broke his ankle like, who gives okay, a shit what makes you interesting why should anybody date you why should anybody want to have you in their life I always told myself if I'm not bringing anything to the table or people need to add some type of value mm -hmm. I'm sorry yeah. I don't want to have stagnant energy so I can't be stagnant energy. Stagnant energy is lack of energy. And if I'm not helping or bringing any value to you, then you don't need me in your life. And I don't need you. So with my friendships, mm -hmm. um, I have to make sure that I can provide that. And even though I don't talk to a lot of friends, like Leah and I, we don't talk all the time. But we'll check in and our conversations will be very intentional. We will mm. ask questions and that it's, it's a meaningful conversation. And then we don't talk for a, for a yeah. while. And that's what we, we, what men and women need to do. Because if you go on a date and you have nothing to talk about, you're going to get a red flag. And those red flags you cannot take mm -hmm. back. <laughs> but ask questions. See, I ask questions. always love asking questions because you 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 make your decision at the end of the day by how the other person answers their questions. D it, uh, you, you might as well di uh, blah, 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 dig deep. Mm -hmm. You might as well just get out of the way. Because what do you like? If you're in your 30s, mid-30s, it takes time to get to know somebody. And if you're not asking the questions now or whenever you get together, how do you really get to know that person? So when you and I moved in together after, what was it? Well, you asked me like five months, six months after we met, June, July, August, We met September, in June. October, I November. asked you to be my girlfriend in October. Uh-huh, and then December. And we moved in the following April. You asked me within six months to move in with you. Yes, I did. And then... December, I was like, she already really gets on my nerves. Now. Might as well live with me. Nine, nine, ten. So about 10 months. 10 months mm -hmm. within meeting, we moved in together. Damn, really? Mm -hmm. That's kind of quick. It was. I didn't think about that. And my, even my own mother said, don't you think it's too quick? I said, why? I'm in my 30s. I want to get to know the guy. We're both busy. And if 
I might as well figure out how he lives his life and he needs to know how I live because I don't have time to be wasting mm -hmm. to see if we're compatible. Mm -hmm. Oh, why not mate, wait till, you know, get the old fashioned. Speed right up there. the process. Have intentional conversations. Okay. If you're not going to live together, that's fine. I respect that. Different mm -hmm. cultures are different. Maybe some people don't have the ability, the finances to, but utilize the time of being together by correctly utilize correctly by by asking each other intentional meaningful questions yes figure out ask ask questions about the past ask questions about the future ask questions about family ask questions about trauma ask questions about the mind what do you think about this how do you feel about this well what if this were to happen i want to know what triggers you i want to know what upsets you i want to know how you cook certain things what little you, what excites you little things that make you you mm -hmm. and i am also going to tell you like the other day you sent me food mm -hmm. you didn't know that i like buffalo sauce with my chick-fil-a it was always the avocado ranch no that's all they that's what it comes with for the wrap for the wrap but i like my wrap with the buffalo sauce I fucked up. so but you didn't know that mm -hmm. and that's why i text you i like buffalo sauce so it's information that you probably would have never known even to ask but because i know that i like that i have to communicate that to you yeah. and that's as I didn't, basic you know, and, and and i didn't take it in in, in, a, in a negative way no, you shouldn't have like, oh my god she should be grateful i got her food like okay cool yeah. buffalo fucking sauce dude and that's how that's the minimal way to get to know somebody like what else what don't you like you like everything like, <laughs> you as far eat as food? everything <laughs> I, I, uh, I don't like fat oh don't yeah like you and i don't like meat. fat on our meat cool. so yeah that's another thing it's letting them know because you would have never thought to ask that question but when you ask yourself what do i like that i think he should know what do i don't like about certain things so that he should know like i don't like pickles i don't like onions and i love pickles and onions so or when we go to certain restaurants i need to like I'll order water, sometimes tea. It's not all the time, but it's getting to know your partner. Okay, mm -hmm. well, I know that she doesn't like this because you're intentional. And that's why it's very important that you communicate with your partner what they like and what they don't like. Because that is part of the love language. That means you're mm -hmm. filling their love tank. That's how you know that you care about your partner. And that's how your partner knows that you care about them. So you didn't know that I like love notes i like little notes but i've never told you this it's not a huge thing i think it's cute occasionally and that's why i leave you notes occasionally yes you do did you find that note yet which one that i wrote in your book no which uh, book you're gonna just have to find All out right. well i ordered a few new books so. <laughs> well not in a book it's in a journal so remember when, Happy I, went, remember when, I, went, I, when I went to ibiza yeah uh, the bachelor trip you said you st stuck a bunch of notes in my thing mm -hmm. i collected them while i brought them back remember mm -hmm. tell them tell them how we pick a place to eat it's a simple thing but i think it, it has helped our relationship tremendously how do we pick a place to eat tell them so since the beginning which i really enjoy and i'm very grateful he was very stern and very determined to say all right look i'm gonna give you two options okay always always two options to eat choose one if not i'll choose for us how has it been working for you amazing and not to say that sometimes you choose my like, baby yeah. i'm tired like pick something because you might be at home and i'm at work you know you have some free time you found you like trying new spots which is what i like about you because i'm a creature of habit i can eat the same shit for for years mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, babe, find something new, and you have, and we've had a great time. Mm -hmm. um, and or sometimes we really actually have to sit down and look at. You know, we live in an area where we have a shit ton of sushi spots mm -hmm. or overall restaurants. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's hard to narrow down which sushi spot to pick. Mm -hmm. But in general, yeah, I give her an option. I'm like, all right, babe, it's gonna be the Mexican or Japanese or you know, 
and here we go pick if you don't pick i'm picking we're going it's never we never had an argument we mm. never you never felt certain way i never felt certain way that's it's a simple quick decision and that's it we move on we go and have a great time and that goes back to the nice guys picking up those habits she shouldn't have to like women like when a man can take charge it's very attractive it's like oh he opens a car door for me all right he um picks me up on time or he um i don't know uh talks brings things up to talk about you know he sets the standard but also knows when to say no and also knows how to carry a conversation sometimes guys will just sit there and just like wait for her to say something and that's boring because <laughs> then it's like spotlight on me so how do you like your bacon cooked on your burrito <laughs> but um back to the the questions the um, how to stop being a nice guy well you you shared a, a few of them i, I want to add that obviously we, we discussed confidence confidence backbone, leader backbone leader have a hobby be able to say no have purpose have, yeah meaning in life also what it's okay if the woman throws a fit, let her get over her shit. She's going to get over it. Now, if she doesn't, this is where your backbone comes up, comes in, and you make the decision whether or not you want to deal with this. Are you dating a child or a woman? You have to ask yourself with a this question is that the type of woman that you want for your kids and if you do then you're gonna have to probably eventually seek therapy because she's just gonna walk all over you and then what's gonna happen the kids are gonna walk all over you and then what here we go guys <laughs> i came for my woman <laughs> and in case you encounter a situation like that you have two options option number one you can be a fucking nice guy and you'll be like oh babe blah 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 what do you want me to do what should i do to make you feel better or be like you know what i can give her some time or you know, you, let her you, she's gonna get over it you grab her you bring her close to you you give her a kiss right tell her to stop doing what you're doing and you're gonna go get dinner give her some food you know and give her some action later on and she needs to get over that shit but be a man don't come down to that level and start arguing and being upset or gaslighting him and i'm telling you guys i've done this shit i've done it i'm guilty of it but i learned and yeah i don't do that and it has been working out well for both of us and if you're afraid that she's gonna leave well the fucking door's right there yeah that means you you need to rethink your values because if she leaves, what if she passes? Then what's going to happen? If she's, she, she dies, then what? Down the line, you're eventually going to meet somebody else. So everybody is replaceable except for you. In your life, you're not replaceable. So create those things for yourself because it's going to add more value to who you are as a man your woman's going to love you even more she's going to respect you and if she doesn't then she's not the woman for you and that is okay when you know who you are and you have faith that you are a good person the right one is going to come in and it doesn't happen to you it happens for you and see it as well, she's fighting me. She doesn't want to, you know, work with me. Okay, well, then it's not working out for you, but it's working out for you. She's just getting moved to some other direction out of your life. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's going to hurt. Growing pains hurt just like they did when we were kids. It's part of life. And if she doesn't want to work with you together... Then just, you're going to have to say your goodbyes. Mic drop. <laughs> Here we go, gentlemen. I, 
She dropped the mic. I don't know. That was beautiful, babe. I can't even say it better. You have you have it from a woman. You had it from both. A man and a woman today, but she closed it out perfectly. And at the end of the day, remember, you need to be respected. Men want their women to respect them. And women want their men to obviously respect them, but also love them. But a woman needs to respect a man. And a woman will never respect a man who's not a leader. So become a leader of yourself first, then your relationship, then your family, and you can be a leader of the world out there. But you need to be respected. And that all comes from within first. So I think this was a great episode. Yeah, I think we, we hit a lot of good points. And uh, this was for you guys. This Again, this episode is dedicated to nice guys and how not to be a nice guy. We hope we brought some value for you guys. And if we did, please click like, subscribe, and share. It's share it especially with those men and women who you believe may need to hear this message. Because that's what we're doing. We are here doing this for you guys. And I'm going to be honest with you, spending our money, um, taking our time, investing, you know, pouring into you guys at the end of the day. And we're, we're grateful and happy to be here and help you guys. And all we're trying to do is bring the value. So if you found any value in this, and even if you didn't, just respect the grind. I mean, shit, click hit and like and subscribe. But uh, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to uh, make a uh, post a comment, send us an email or me an email, DM or whatever, or if you want to hear any other topics of conversation. We're here for it. We're here for it. Dive see. deeper into it. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you guys next time. Toodles. Bye.